All right, welcome back to Dinner Television. It is Thursday, which means it is time for us to dive into the hot button issues of the day. Uh, and this one is relatively fresh off the presses. Uh, the NDP government uh, laying out uh, its vision for the next uh, few months uh, today with the throne speech. And uh, very interesting in the sense that it seems like Rachel Notley wants us to love her again. Uh, of course, talking uh, to our three favorite people here. Uh, Miriam Thomas, Danielle, thanks for coming in. Uh, so this, at least on the surface, seems to be Rachel Notley's way to try and curry favor with families here in the province. Um, how successful do you think this is on the surface in terms of that? Well, it'll be interesting. Certainly the speech, I think the word families came up more than two dozen times. Uh, so certainly, great drinking game. But, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, throwing speeches really could be a great game like that. Um, but yeah, certainly I think that that's the focus that they're trying to maintain here. And I think that's the reason why they decided to open up the session with uh, the tabling of their first bill, Bill 1, which is a bill to, uh, that proposes to reduce school fees, which uh, the NDP ran on an election platform of eliminating school, pe school fees. This bill doesn't go that far. 25%. As opposed to, I think, 50% was what they said they were going to do initially. So. Yeah. And, and and, and it also sort of looks to address things like a school lunch program, potentially uh, bus, uh, busing uh, fees as well. So uh, they're really trying to send that message to people. And we've seen sort of these overtures in the last few weeks as well in terms of the green energy programs and uh, people, you know, able to upgrade uh, certain parts of their home for Shower free. Heads. Shower heads, light bulbs, that kind of thing. So they're really trying to send the message that, okay, things have been tough for a while. We see that, but we really want to try and help you. Here's all these things that we're going to try and do. Like every other throne speech, though, it was light on details because there are a lot of... But they're meant to be that way, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see where, where these sort of promises actually land when we see things like the budget and other pieces of legislation. I think the problem they're having is that they're, you know, everybody, I think their base, expected a game changer. New government, they always had all the answers, and the previous government never did anything they right. They always do an opposition. Sure, that's what you do. But, but you know... 25% off of school fees, when you really run on a platform of eliminating them, then down to 50% or 25%, big question is, where is this going to come from? Because school boards still need that money to operate day to day. So what has uh, Minister Egan found in the education budget that I'm not aware of, where he can now carve out this much well, I money? I think he said efficiencies. Uh, yeah. that, that great environment, completely vague in, term. environment, shower heads, yeah. really? They're probably made in China and, and being shipped <laughs> over here on, on diesel power ships. You know, there isn't anything monumental that I think their base is looking for. And what I find very interesting is that they're, they're trying to gain favor from those who probably maybe voted for them only once and likely are not going to vote for them again because they're simply not NDPers. But they're taking chances with their solid base, uh, intervening on pipelines. F fabulous, you know, but how does their base really feel about it? Eliminating uh, school fees but only 25%, not getting rid of funding for private schools. You know, those are issues that you would think that they would bring in a budget and, and a speech from the throne, but we're not hearing it. So let's watch. So do you think there, there is a positive in here for them? Well, positives. Um, there's also, they mentioned jobs and they mentioned energy quite a bit, so they're trying to run on that platform. Like uh, Thomas said, they're definitely trying to appeal to people who maybe aren't their base, which is kind of safe because if you're an NDP base, who else are you going to vote for in this province? You're not going to vote for the Wild Roads and you're not going to vote for the PCs. So alienating your base is like a long, t is a, it's a progressive, uh, a common thing in progressive parties because you're not going to switch to the other side unless you're pretty irritated. Um, when it comes to uh, jobs, they don't quite have a job bill. Um, they didn't have a solid record on jobs. The Wild Rose hit back with that right away, uh, the job losses. Um, but of course, you need to bring that up in the throne speech. And um, there is a little bit of economic recovery. So of course, they're going to take the credit for that because they had to take the fall for the economic downturn. Okay. So was there anything, I guess, just in terms of today's throne speech that uh, well, we talked about, obviously, the broad strokes here. Was there anything in there that you think could, could subtly prove to be a, a really big thing going forward? A big issue. Yeah. Uh, the major one that I think is going to be problematic for them in, in the near future is capping of energy prices. Now, everybody at face value will say, great, and then as I think LG said, that it shouldn't be a jack in a box that you know, pops out at you every time. My comment would be, you know, if every time you get surprised by Jack jumping out of a box, you're not so smart. Uh, but the problem is this. They're capping the price but they're increasing the cost of production. 
and something has to give. So for anybody who starts doing the math, you know that taxpayer is going to have to come in and pay for that difference. So even though your bill that will arrive at your house will be smaller, you will have to pay for that difference through your taxes. So what they really are doing is replicating the Ontario mm -hmm. uh, energy model, and that didn't work out so yeah, well. I've, as you I've can heard see some right bad now. things about that one. <laughs> Mm -hmm. generally speaking. Uh, you guys agree with that? Or was there something else that stood out for you that could become an issue down the road? Well, I'm, I mean, obviously, we've been hearing from the, the opposition parties about, you know, um, the need to cut costs and cut spending, mm -hmm. and, and, and there's a $10 billion deficit looming, and something has to give in that sense. Um, and it was interesting because a part of the throne speech talked about uh, curbing the growth in spending and talking about how in previous governments uh, spending over the year the growth in spending was in, at some points they even used a figure 11 mm percent -hmm. so I, th I thought that kind of language was interesting because they also at the same time said but we're not going to you know we're not going to be making any kind of reckless cuts essentially that we're going to make sure that we protect public services. services so it's going to be interesting in in terms of how that's balanced and and how they're able to fend off the constant opposition and other right-wing sort of lobby groups that say no you need to begin to make some really big cuts when they've they've made it quite clear that they're not willing to do that so are they going to do it and if so how are they going to to do it and justify it or sort of backdoor do it and if they're not going to do it they're good. That's going to be, I think, the tenor of the, the conversation over the next few yeah. months. And we will see that in the budget because some 70% of every dollar that a government spends is salaries. Nurses, doctors, teachers, and you name it. And major negotiations are coming up front. And we'll see how committed they really are to curbing back their deficit spending based on how they negotiate those deals. But they haven't promised to cut back on um, the unions. Of course, that would not be likely th a likely thing for the NDP to do. What they're going to do is they're going through the ABCs. That's how they're looking to curb spending. So they're trying to go through what they're calling Tory retirement homes mm. um, and other or agencies. But while they make those cuts and those amalgamations, there's a high likelihood that they're going to be hiring more government workers when they get rid of the old ones. So it'll be interesting to see the impact on that. They're not finished yet, and I can't say how, there you go. See how it's going to roll out. Yeah, provincial politics never dull here in Alberta. Um, all right.